Welcome back, troglodytes, to the Troglies Guitar Show. Today we have a beautiful white Les Paul Custom from 1990. This is just a really nice looking guitar. Wait, hey, wait, wait a minute. Well, what's going on here? Why can we see through the finish? This isn't just any regular Les Paul Custom. This is from the Limited Colors run of Les Pauls from 1990. To fully understand what is going on with these, let's do a little bit of history. All right, so the Juskowitz era, it began in late 1986, 1987. That's when the Norland era ended and things were kind of crazy. You had the super strats like you can learn about in this video and just a bunch of other failures until the Les Paul Classic finally just took off in 1989 and 1990. These guitars were birthed kind of at the same time. This is when, you know, Gibson was getting back on track. And this is like the first limited edition series that really stands out historically. All of the instruments in this run featured one similar trait. The finishes were translucent meaning you could see through to see the wood grain. There were six different finishes on four standards and two customs. The standards were mocha, purple, amber, and blue. The customs were white and red. There were 200 of each finish made, and of those 200, 50 of those were for the international market. Now, out of the six colors, second hand, which ones are the most popular? Well, you'll generally find the blue standards and the white customs being sought out by more people. Because let's face it, that purple one, it's the color of Barney. Now, granted, it looks a lot better in person than it does in photos. I've had one of those. But the blue and white, that's where it's at. So, as you can imagine, finding one of these, you don't see them every day. And especially in this condition. There's three main qualifiers that I have for the Translucent series. First, you have to find one that has amazing wood grain. Because some of these, well, they're kind of plain. This one has that beautiful wood grain all over. I love this one. The second thing you're looking for as far as a collector, you want one in clean condition. This one definitely checks off that box. And the third one is it's so hard to find a white one that hasn't aged to cream. This is probably the most pristine one that I could find without paying this guy $12,000. But it's kind of interesting documenting this one because the top, despite being trans white, it's not necessarily the same shade of white as the back and sides. This is a very good indicator of what it looked like new because the natural maple tops color is coming through the white as well. So it kind of makes it appear slightly tan, which is kind of interesting. But the limited colors edition, they're just kind of cool guitars. The only thing that really makes them special is that they're kind of a birth of the right direction of a new era and their finish. So let's go ahead and hop on the workbench to learn about the specs of these instruments. The pickups that are in this guitar are the Gibson 490R 498T. Now you might be saying, huh, those don't look like modern day 490R 498Ts. And you're right, this is the like first iteration of them. They were introduced kind of like really late 1989 into 1990. There's also something called the PU-490 that came in the late 80s, but eh, these are slightly different. So let's take a good look here. You've got the same base plate as like a Tim Shaw or a T-top, but the main characteristic here are these four large screws. That's what tells you it's from the 490 series. These things get sold as Tim Shaw PAFs all the time on the used market, and that is incorrect. So our neck pickup here reads 7.98k ohms, and the bridge position reads just about 13, which is where it should be. The pickup cavity reads T white for translucent white, and you can kind of see that finish over top of the mahogany there. Short neck tenon as these will be, and no real special markings in the bridge cavity. 
The bridge itself is the large print made in Germany. That is correct for this one. These were used from the late 80s into I believe like the mid 90s. If your bridge says made in Germany just on one side in small print, it's from the 70s and early 80s. Your tailpiece is pretty basic. The main way to identify a Gibson one is it only has that line in the middle. It does not extend to the edges. Generally on this model, you'll find the Gibson branded Schallers, but what's unique about this particular era of Gibson is they won't have any pilot holes. So sometimes if somebody puts Grovers on here, you really can't tell unless you take off the tuner and look for an imprint. Now, to me, that imprint looks stock Grover, so it's possible those are original or they were replaced very early on in this guitar's life. Inside the control cavity, we can see all the wiring looks to be original. We have all 1990 pot codes. This one dates to the 43rd week. This one looks like the 22nd. And then both of the tone pots appear to be the 18th week of 1990. You can see there has been some shielding paint put in as well. Another feature to notice is you see those holes right there? These are basically just leftover base plates for when they stopped using that shielding tin cover as you'll see in like the 70s and the early 80s. If I remember correctly, I think it's around mid-85 that they stopped putting those covers on and go back to a traditional ground wire as you can see right there. These are mahogany necks with ebony fretboards, your traditional maple top with a mahogany body. And I'm pretty sure these will have nine hole weight relief in them as well. Now that we know a little bit about this guitar, let's go ahead and hear how it sounds. Now that we know how this instrument sounds, let's go ahead and review its condition. This example is ridiculously clean. It's not perfect, there's a few things we have to go over, but as far as a trans white custom, yeah this is probably about as good as you're going to find. So we'll run the light over it here, you can see some light string change wear, nothing major here. Truss rod works just fine, has plenty of adjustment room left. Ebony fretboard's in good shape. Here on the fourth fret, there's kind of like a weird bump on it. It feels like it's just part of the wood. I was unable to clean that off, so it's there. My guess is it was there from the factory. The frets show next to no wear at all. 
the face of the guitar, it does not have any major nicks, dings. I mean, you've got some light handling wear and scratches just from lightly picking on it, but definitely extra clean here. Even the gold hardware is in great shape. You've got some scratches on the pickup covers. It's not 1000% perfect, but everything is stock on this one. Unfortunately, on the back is where we have some sins to go over. Serial number, it looks like it says 93460434. So this is a very late 1990. I believe I've seen some 1991 limited colors edition guitars, but this is the little decal that you should have to know if it's a transparent finish on the top. Notice that colors is spelled the overseas way. That way the 50 that they sent overseas would be spelled correctly to them. But here you can see somebody had this on a non-nitro safe stand and that's what caused these burn marks. You can also see you have those common finish check lines around the nut. Thankfully they don't spread too far up along the fretboard like, like you'll usually see on a white custom, but those are there. Uh, the neck profiles on these, they're fairly thin, but kind of rounded at the same time. It's not quite a medium profile. I would still consider this a 60s neck. The back of the instrument, you've got some more stand rash right there, and you kind of have a little bit of black scuffing down in this area. You might be able to polish and or buff that out though. But from what you've seen here, those are all the sins. I mean, just a little bit of finish checking and some stand rash, but besides that, this is kind of a time capsule here. I mean, this thing's working on 30 years old. Back when I was first starting out with this whole guitar thing, somebody had a complete collection of mint condition versions of all these guitars. I still regret not buying that, because that would have been a fun documentation process. Let's go ahead and check it out under black light. You can definitely tell this one was a case queen. It's glowing, but it doesn't glow a lot, which means it has not seen too much sunlight here. But everything is looking good here. This will kind of help. And this is why I do the black light test because I completely missed this one. Now this is either some sort of stand rash or it's a finish touch up it does appear more white in regular light now that I look at it. So let's go ahead and say it's a touch up. This will help show you where there's some additional stand marks. Now these ones on the bottom, you really can't see them in normal light, but they are there under black light. But other than that, we're looking good here. Back of the instrument, clear as day, that stand rash. So this thing must have been on a few different stands. You can see you've got some on the neck there. But once again, not all of these are visible under normal light. So no brakes, cracks, or repairs, but we do have the unfortunate stand rash. This instrument still retains its original Gibson USA case. This is the very early iteration of the Gibson USA case. It's got the brown exterior with the pink interior. One way you can tell it's an earlier one is the brown exterior will be darker and they have what is called the pink blanket here. This was only used like the first year or two and then they switched to kind of a thin satin shroud. And most people will end up just cutting these things off but this one is still attached. But you've got some light tears and storage wear to the outside of the case but for the most part it's pretty darn clean. The interior is also in great shape. I just swept this one out. That's something I'm going to start doing because I finally got a sweeper that'll do it. And everything's just looking good in here. You've got good heel support, double neck rest, and you even have case candy with this one. That's a pretty impressive spread for an almost 30 year old guitar. It's a quality assurance thing telling you today's price and five year warranty. Owner's manual, which is kind of cool to see. This one talks about how to do the combo lock, but nobody ever set this one. And this is the warranty information, which was never filled out. If you think you might be interested in being the next owner of this translucent white Les Paul Custom, feel free to check out that link in the description that will take you to the Reverb for Sale ad. Thank you Troglodytes for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. 
and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.